how we can share our faith and how so many times we can kind of get it wrong. Um, this morning, I want, we're obviously in a series, uh, church. Oh, I've just come up on the screen. That's quite scary. Um, we're in the third week of a little mini series called Basic Growth. Uh, we've looked at reading the Bible and the value of reading the Bible regularly. Um, last week, we looked at prayer life together. Uh, and I hope some of that was of, of use to you. And this week, we're looking at witnessing or sharing your faith. Um, in fairness, sharing your faith could be a mini series in itself. There is so much um, that we could talk about, but we've got a short period of time in one talk today. And so um, I want to spend a few minutes um, just looking at the why and the who of faith sharing, and then move on to share some thoughts about how and when. We're not going to cover everything. It's absolutely impossible, but we will get through some of it. And this hopefully will just encourage you, maybe challenge you a little bit too. And then right at the end, I want to leave you with a little mini challenge um, that kind of comes back to the start. So um, let's start with the why. Why should we share our faith? Um, a few years ago, quite a few years ago now, about 10, maybe 12 years ago, I went on a conference in Coventry. Um, and it was about evangelism. I should explain that before I worked for City Mission, I worked for an evangelistic organization called the 43 Trust, uh, which comes from Psalm 40, verse 3, that many may see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. And so I spent um, about 10 years working with a whole team of evangelists, and we would share our uh, work with churches across the UK, uh, in Africa, India, parts of Europe, where um, we would send out teams of evangelists to work with churches to to share their faith with their local community and put on single events, multiple events, uh, events across whole areas. Um, it was amazing. And so I've got a little bit of background, um, but that doesn't mean I'm an expert in any way. And I get it wrong as many times as I get it right. Um, so why should we share our faith? I believe we should, but as I say, I went to this conference and uh, well, the first question we were asked, we're, in, we're inside a, a, an Anglican church and on the, on the walls all the way around the outside, the, the outside, inside wall of the building they put statements and from one side of the church it said i believe i have um, a right to share my faith on and jesus calls me to share, share my faith in every opportunity at every given time in every given moment that may relate a little bit to the video we've just watched and it went through um, a scale right through to the other side of the church which said i have no right to share my faith with anybody unless they ask. And we were encouraged to go and stand by one of the statements. I think there was about eight statements. And it was really interesting to see a group of Christians all together scatter. Um, and some go to number one and some go to number eight and some go all the way around the church in the different uh, statements there. That everybody had a pretty much different opinion on whether we should share our faith. Well, I want to encourage you this morning that we are called to share our faith. And um, we're going to look at a few whys this morning. The first why is I think it's human nature. It's human nature for us to, to see something, hear something, taste something, uh, experience something that we enjoy, that changes us, and we want to share it. So whether, whether we watch a great film, how many people watch a film and go, oh, you've got to watch this film. It's amazing. You've got to go to the cinema. To, you remember cinemas? Um, you've got to go to the cinema to watch it because you don't want to sit on the small screen. You want to sit on the, and people get excited about it. Or, or, or they start a new TV series or read a book or, or eat a restaurant. Do you remember restaurants? Those places where you didn't have to cook the food and you don't have to wash up. One day, one day. Um, but it's something we really enjoyed, something we enjoy doing. And we tell people. It's natural instinct. We tell people. We become evangelists. We, we become those bringer of good news. Do you know the good news? This new restaurant's just opened. Do you know the good news? There's this amazing washing powder that, you know what I mean? It, we talk it up. We tell people about it. Before Christmas, um, I got a book. I don't know if you can see it or even if it might be back to, back to front on my screen. But I, I got a book just after Christmas. Before Christmas, uh, a friend of mine had the same book. Uh, I'd been thinking about, do I want to read it? Do I want to waste money buying it if it's no good? And then I saw uh, my friend had a birthday and she put her birthday presents up on Facebook. This is what I had. Thank you to everybody. And within it, within the pile, was that book. So I thought, I'll wait. I'll see what she thinks. And so she read it and I said, is it worth it? Oh, it's brilliant. She says, you, you should go get it. And it started a conversation on Facebook. Somebody else said, yeah, I, I've read it. You've got to get it. It's really good. 
So what did I do? I go out and bought, I bought it based on their recommendations. Um, based on the fact that she was talking, you know, she was telling everybody how good it was. Um, and now I bought it and I'm reading it and I'm loving it. And so it's amazing sometimes our human nature to share our beliefs, whether it be food, fun, faith, with others comes naturally. So I want to encourage you to keep doing it. Part of a conversation that we shouldn't actually be making an effort. It should be natural within our, uh, within, our, within our nature to do it. The second reason I think we should share our faith is because the Bible tells us to. Um, if you go back to the first week in this, this series, um, David talked about reading the Bible uh, and about actually if we have a, an amount of knowledge of the Bible, um, that can help us. And I, and I believe, you know, times like this when we're going to share our faith with someone knowledge of the stories of the bible don't necessarily need to know what page number it's on uh, or even what chapter and verse if you know what book it comes from if you know roughly where it is in the bible then you can find it when you're talking to somebody but actually the bible tells us to share our faith matthew 4 19 and 20 come follow me jesus said and i will send you out to fish for people so he's talking to the disciples they're fishermen and he's saying look put your nets down forget being fishers of fish I want you to be fishers for people. I want you to share what I'm going to give to you with others. Mark 16, 15 and 16 says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So Jesus is, is there telling people you've got to go out. It's no use just being in a church, in a house, in a group and all look in. It's time to turn it around and look out. Psalm 96, 2 to 4, sing to the Lord, praise his name. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Great is the Lord. He's the most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. Again, a beautiful psalm telling us to go and tell people. Go and tell people. And then Matthew 28, 18 to 20. We know this one really well. Great commission. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The important thing with that is Jesus is telling them to go, but he's telling them with authority because he has all, all, all authority and he's passing that authority on he's only asking us to do it because he knows we can he knows we have the gifts that he's given us in order to share him with others so i believe we do it naturally i believe we do it because the bible tells us to and the third reason is because i think we all want to see the kingdom grow we all want to see our friends our family our neighbors our work colleagues our loved ones in the kingdom of heaven to have that opportunity to know Jesus, to have the opportunity to, for eternal life. And actually, how do we do that? We've got to do that by getting involved, getting our hands dirty. Um, I, did, I did a talk years ago, and it was called Time to Get Your Feet Muddy. It's time to, to step out and take risks and to get our feet muddy, to, to walk a different path in order that we can share our faith with others. So hopefully there's three whys, and, and hopefully you can agree with the whys. Um, so now we move on to the who. In fact, there's two who's. It's a, it's a pair of who's for you. The first who is who should share Jesus with people? Who should be faith sharing? Who should be evangelizing? Um, 1 Peter 3, 15 to 16 says, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. So we're called to, to bring an answer. If somebody asks us the question, we're called to bring an answer. If we don't know the answer, we're called to go and find out with them, for them, and do it gently, with respect. Don't, like the video, slam something down on the table and say, scary? Whoa, how scary too. We don't do that. That is not going to bring people into the kingdom of heaven but we're called to share Jesus with people. Um, some people might try and say, do you know what? There's this passage in the Bible, I've read it. Um, it says about gifts, and one of the gifts is evangelism. And not everybody gets it. We all get different gifts. So I'm going to leave it with the evangelists. 
Um, I'm going to go and do my gift and I'm going to leave that with them. Bad news. Um, yes, specific gifts are given to different people. Different people have very different gifts from God. But also, we've just read it, 1 Peter 3, 15, 16. Always be prepared to give an answer. Great commission, go and tell people. But go and make disciples. We're all called to be part of this faith sharing thing. We might not do all of it. We might only do our little bit, but we've got to be willing to do what God's calling us to do in the sharing of faith. Um, I, I tried to argue with God a few years ago, back when I worked for the 43 Trust. Um, as I say, my job was to go and prepare churches. I used to plan with them and get them ready and train them up and all of that. And then when the evangelist came, I would go on to the next place. And so it wasn't really my job to be evangelistic. They were the evangelists. I was the kind of the one that went before. Um, and so when I was in the office one day, a phone rings, and a lovely gentleman, uh, a minister from Coventry phones and speaks to me and says, Darren, I need your help. Um, the bishop, Bishop of Coventry, not the current one, the four, a couple of bishops ago, uh, has contacted me, he says, our church have got to have a mission. We've got to have a, a period of outreach. We've got to have a weekend and we've got to, you know, we've got to do something to about sharing our faith with the community. And I'm terrified. Uh, I've not done anything like this before. Somebody told me about the 43 Trust and it'd be really brilliant if you could send somebody. I was like, yeah, this should be fine. Um, what, sh what, what dates are you thinking? We usually work a year in advance. And this guy said, oh no, um, five weeks time. And I looked at the diary and, and both our main evangelists who, who worked in the office were already busy, they were, they were already elsewhere. And I said, I'm really sorry, we, we, we can't because um, Ian's busy, Mark's busy, uh, and you know, it's just not possible. And this guy's response was, what about you? I can hear Andy laughing upstairs now. Thanks, Andy. Um, I can, I, what about you? And I said, oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm the planner. I, I do the organising. I can help you. I prepare you. I, I don't do the answers. And that's their job. He says, Darren, I really need you to do it. What's your diary like on that weekend? And I looked and my diary was empty. And I said, yeah, but that's not my job. It's not what I do. And he said, look, I really, really need you to. And the bishop wants you to, too. And after an argument with God and an argument with this guy, I agreed to go. And I was terrified. I knew all of the words. I knew all of the, the ways to share my faith. I knew what I was going to do. And on the Friday evening and on twice on the Saturday, and I think once or twice on the Sunday, I had to speak at an event. Uh, some of them were informal events where we, we stopped and had a meal or, or a, 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 a something. And then I got to speak in front of all these people, many of whom weren't Christians. And then church service on uh, Sunday morning, I think a church gathering on Sunday evening to invite all the people that had been um, to the other events. And I got up and go, God, I don't know why you've asked me to do this. It's not what I do. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do it. It's not going to make any difference to the kingdom. Uh, it's going to make me look stupid. It's going to make this guy, the vicar, look stupid. And God just said, do it. You just do what I've asked you to do. And over that weekend, 42 people gave their life to Jesus. Now, I'm not bragging. That's not me. It was all about God. God used me that weekend. But when God calls you to do it, he calls you to do it. You may not have the spiritual gift of evangelism, but he still calls you to be an evangelist. He still calls you to answer the question when you are asked. And so I want to encourage you this morning and challenge you this morning. Who is God asking you? to share your faith with, to, to talk to about Jesus, about your church experience, about your life, um, because he will ask you to do that. And it may be a case that you're just going, la, 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 because you don't want to. Uh, the other who I just want to mention is um, who do we share our faith to? Obviously, if, if we meet somebody and we get into a conversation, they start talking to, about your faith, then that's a, a conversation you weren't expecting. We, you hear many uh, evangelists and, and church leaders end up having amazing conversations on planes or trains or long journeys. Um, but actually, most of us will, will not experience that, but we will experience opportunities to share our faith. And in the 10 years I, I used to help churches um, in times of outreach, the first two questions we used to ask them, and we would ask them as a, as a church, who do you want to reach? We would have a whole church service that would be normal instead of a preach, We'd break people up into groups and we'd say, who do you want to reach? 
And it was brilliant because you get pages and pages and pages of answers, most of them totally unrealistic in the place that church was at. And then we say, okay, how do you plan on doing it? What contact have you got with this group? What contact have you got with that group? And in the end, we used to whittle it down and create a quite a strategic plan of these are the people we have contact with quite regularly. And this is where they are now. They're obviously not in church. This is what they're doing. How can we link? And it might be that it's your, your neighbours. Your neighbours don't come to church, but actually you'd love them to come to church. You have a relationship with them. And so what can you do in a way of sharing your faith with them that is real? It could be the young people in the community. It could be um, the nursing home. It could be whatever. But we need to be realistic and we need to find out where those people are. So I want to encourage you in the who. The who is you and the who is who's out there. Who do you have contact with? Who could you um, share your faith with today? Okay. We need to move on to the how. And as I said, this is no way definitive. This isn't Darren said, do this, do this, do this, and then people will become Christians because it's in God's timing. We're part of a chain. We're part of, um, I've, I've spoke before about, you know, when you put dominoes on their end and you knock them all down, we're one of those dominoes. We need to make sure we're close enough to God and close enough to those contacts that we want to share faith with that actually we can introduce one to the other. We're the bit in the middle. We're the gap. We, we stand in the gap and we bring people together. So the how, I want to offer you um, eight Bs, not the letter B, B-E, something to be. I think if you um, pick a couple of these out um, and have a go, have a, have a, have a process of actually, let, let's, let's try this. Um, it's weird at the minute because many of us can't do anything in terms of going out and meeting in groups, but actually you can take some of these things and, and just shrink it down to what we're doing now and focus it on in ways that actually work for um, being in the middle of lockdown, middle of a pandemic. Um, I also want to point you towards a book. Uh, I haven't got it with me, unfortunately it's at work and I'm on furlough, so works that way and I'm here. Um, there's a brilliant book, uh, it is American, so if you get irritated by American um, writing, like they can't spell neighbor and things like that, <laughs> it's worth a go. It's a great book, it's called The Art of Neighboring, uh, got by a person called Jay Pathak. The Art of Neighbouring by Jay Pathak. Maybe we'll try and put a link up on the Facebook page um, later on. It's worth a read. It, this is um, people who purposefully and systematically said, I need to know my neighbourhood better. And one of the opening questions they have is, what are the names of your neighbours? Maybe three doors that way, three doors that way. What about the ones across the road? Do you know them? Do you know why that husband comes home at 10 o'clock every night when everybody else finishes work at five? What does he do? What are their stresses? What are their struggles? And it develops a, 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 along the lines of what I'm going to talk about, ways of us actually linking with people, creating opportunities to share Jesus with people rather than it being like a cold call. It needs to be something that is based on relationship. So here are eight Bs. We're going to whip through them a little bit because... Um, yeah, time's moving on. Um, the first thing is be loving. Uh, John 3.16. Uh, God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son. God's missional instinct, God's plan is love. And I think sometimes we can forget that. And if we are called to be like Jesus, we are called to be Jesus's disciples. If God is so loved the world that he sent Jesus and Jesus is love, then it follows that we are love. We are called to love people. We are called to be with people. I know we can't be in that way, but actually we can still walk the journey with people. We can still support people. Um, you know, it was, it was amazing to be on Zoom on Thursday for Bob's funeral to see how many people were on Zoom and, you know, just wanting to be there for Doreen and, and just say, do you know what? We're with you. And we can do that for different people. One of my one of my dearest volunteers lost her daughter-in-law last week, and the funeral was this weekend just gone. And actually, I can't go with them. I can't support her by giving her a hug, which is what my, I would naturally want to do. But I can be with her. I can be praying for her. I can love her. And so the first thing, and maybe the, one of the biggest things we can try is, actually, how can we love people? How can we um, bless people? Um, 
with, with an agenda that actually sometime down the road, we will love them enough to be able to give them Jesus. We might not always be able to have a conversation with them on that, on that first conversation. It might be just we love them for years. And actually, that's all that matters. Because God calls us to love people. Um, we need to see people through Jesus' eyes. We need to realise that each person on this planet has amazing value to him. And actually, if they have amazing value to him, they have amazing value to us. The second thing is be prayerful. So be loving, be prayerful. Um, Jesus is not not only prays for his disciples, but he prays for those who will come to faith through his disciples. Look at Gen John 17, 20, if you get a moment. Prayer focuses us. We talked about this last week, about being focused in our prayer, really going for it in our prayer life. Don't just make it something we've ticked the box and we're done prayer for today, let's go. Prayer focuses the love of God into our communities, into our contacts. And as it says in Luke 9, 30, uh, 38, that we learn that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So actually that means us. That actually there's not there's huge opportunities out there, but we're not doing a lot about it. We need to be praying for opportunities. For others, we need to be praying for the folk who maybe are more skilled at this than we are. All those people in the chain I talked about. And we need to pray for us as individuals when we do get that opportunity that we don't choke, but actually we do try to give an answer. Even if that answer is, you know, I don't really know, but we'll find out. And also we need to pray for us as a church and church communities across our city and across our country. That when opportunities come up to be evangelistic, to be witnesses, to have faith sharing opportunities, that we don't go, Whoa, that we try. And we need to pray for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads all of this. The Holy, Holy Spirit leads us um, by preparing us, by strengthening us, by encouraging us, by guiding us and by protecting us. We need to be covered in the Holy Spirit, ready for those faith sharing opportunities. So we need to be loving. We need to be um, praying. We need to be authentic is number three. Um, Matthew 28, 19 tells us, go and make disciples. But you can't be something you can't make something if you're not it in the first place. If you don't know it and have experience of it, it's very difficult to do it. It'd be like having an Ikea box of furniture, you know, a flat pack of furniture and no instructions. And you say, go and make that wardrobe. And you go, but I don't know how. So we need to make sure that it goes back to that reading the Bible. It goes back to praying. It goes back to making sure our relationship with God is growing all the time. And that's tough, especially in times like this when it is just horrible. But actually, I encourage you. And it was great to see some encouraging texts come to me last week following the talk on prayer. But actually spend a little bit more time reading the Bible. And if you struggle, if the Bible is, is, is something you really struggle, you're not a reader, find it on the Internet. Listen to it. Watch video clips. There is some amazing stuff out there. Um, try and find your way of doing it. Find your way of praying. What's your routine for prayer? How would you pray? Find, and slowly, the, the authentic nature of our faith will start to flow out and people will see it in us. People will say we're different. I remember oh, about 25 years ago, uh, I was a new Christian-ish and I used to work in a supermarket, a, a store, electrical store. And one of the guys um, I found out used to call me Brother Burgess. Um, Burgess being my surname, Brother Burgess. And I went, what's that all about? Uh, I know it was all a bit of fun. And he says, well, you're a Christian, aren't you? And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you're, you're a Christian. So, you, you know, I thought it'd be funny to call you Brother Burgess. I said, how do you know I'm a Christian? He said, you can just tell. I took that as a good thing. And I'm going to still take it as a good thing. But he, he was a good friend and a close friend and actually thought, actually, maybe the choices I'm making, maybe um, my, the way I'm living is starting to show and be a different way. I was hoping that I was being authentic. Number three, being authentic. Me and four, number four, be relational. Um, take a few seconds. How many non-Christian friends do you have? How many could you name? Sometimes that's a difficult question for Christians to answer. Um, Back in the day, before we had kids, um, Andy and I were married, we were comfy, we got into that situation where we were comfy, but I was a Christian who went to church, was in a home group, <clears throat> involved in other church stuff, 
uh, I worked in a Christian organization with other Christians where I worked with churches. So I was surrounded by people of faith. And then I sat at an event, I was running the event, and my, one of my colleagues stood up and just said to the church, how many non-Christian contacts have you got? How many non-Christian friends have you got? And I suddenly thought, hmm, I don't think I've got that many. And actually, that's a question we all need to, to be. How are we going to share our faith with people if we haven't got the people that need the faith? So actually, we need to be authentic um, with um, those people. We need to be um, real in relationship with those people. Um, they might only be our neighbours, they might be our people down our street, people in our workplace, wherever. Actually, if they're important to us, get to know them. If you're, if you're not a list of who do you want to share your faith with, it's that person, you need a relationship. And not a fake relationship. Don't become friends with somebody because you want to share Jesus with them, because they'll work it out, they'll know it. But actually, just start to know people. So that goes back to that number one, start to love people. Uh, according to research, over 60% of people come to faith through influence of friends and family. So they know somebody who knows Jesus. And that could be us. So we need to be in a relationship. Number five, be an example. Um, Jesus says our good works should be seen, Matthew 5, 6. Um, we need to be seen to be Christians. We need to be seen to be real. We need to see that our faith matters to us. And that the, the, the teaching that Jesus gives us is important and we go and do it. So if Jesus tells us to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, reach out for those who are being persecuted, protect them, then actually if we're doing it, then people will see. Uh, more and more over the last couple of decades, people who are into spirituality, people who are looking on a, a faith journey, want to see talking about it. Um, also about our experience of church. We need to be honest, but we need to big it up in a way. Um, I can remember a few years ago, again, before we had children, uh, we used to meet, uh, we had a couple, uh, a, a couple of non-Christian friends, husband and wife, and the routine, it became a bit of a routine, about once a month, once every six weeks, after church on a Sunday, we would meet them for a meal, uh, a Sunday lunch together, and nine times out of ten, we were late. The reason for being late was because church went on too long. That was what we told them. What we should have said is, you know, we've had an amazing time this morning. And we're really sorry we're late, but actually we had a great time. The, the preacher was phenomenal. He said this, or we heard this new song and we had to practice it. And it was all about this. It was absolutely amazing. But we're really sorry we're late. Instead, we went, oh, really sorry we're late, really stressed. Church went on far too long. The minister wouldn't show up. But, and so we only told people the negative of our experience of being a Christian. We need to be an example in what we do and what we say. The sixth thing, be chatty. Um, my natural place to be is, as an introvert, I sit back and let Andy do all the talking. You probably noticed. Um, I'm very happy to talk to you. It's just not my natural place to come across a room and introduce myself. But actually, we need to chat to people. Again, it's that relational thing. If we're not if they don't know us, they don't recognise our voice, how are they ever going to want to come and talk to us or ask us a question? <clears throat> the reason, the way we share Jesus with people, excuse me, is that we need to be ready to answer their questions. Um, we need to be ready to share our story. We need to be ready to admit that the church gets it wrong sometimes. Not APEC necessarily, but sometimes maybe. But church in general. And you need to remember that sometimes... People, when they say church, can't separate denominations. That makes no sense to lots of people. It doesn't make a great deal of sense to me sometimes. But actually, we need to be ready for people to have a grievance with the church. And it may be a case we, that we need to say sorry before we can move on to introducing them to Jesus. And if you don't know the answer to any of these things, you need to say we'll find out together. I remember years ago, I was speaking at an Alpha course and we'd done all the talky bits, we're having lunch together, and this lady came over, well, one of the team came over with a lady and said, this lady's saying, and she made a statement that sounded so not from the Bible, but she was convinced somebody had told her it was from the Bible. And it would have been really easy for me to say, do you know what? No, it's not from the Bible. Don't know. D forget it. Don't worry about it. But it was really the block between her and becoming a faith, uh, becoming a Christian. 
And so I said, look, I don't know. But I will try and find out. We, while this afternoon is going on, I will try and dig some information out and we'll come and talk again at the next break. And we did. We went and found out. And actually, if somebody had twisted what the Bible had said, no, it never happens, does it? Um, they twisted what the Bible had said and actually it really messed this lady up. And so through that and through lots of prayer and the continuation of the Alpha course, by the end of it, she became a Christian. Because we were honest and said, I don't know, but I'll find out. So we need to be chatty. We need to talk to people. The seventh thing we need to do, we're nearly there. Be missional. Uh, we're all in this together. We need to accept that actually we may not be the ones that bring them to Jesus. And it may not be today. Um, if you're praying for somebody and you're chatting with somebody, maybe somebody in your family, it may be somebody you've known forever, and all of a sudden they become a Christian because they're chatting to somebody else or they had an experience somewhere where they became a Christian. And it's really easy to go, well, that's, well, well, well why didn't they do it when I, became, when I was talking to them? Um, and actually, it's not down to us. Mission is about all of us. Mission is about a community of believers working together to share Jesus with folk. And actually, if that chain's working, if that domino run is working, and we're all doing our bit, then actually... We could pray for somebody for 40 years, if that's what you're called to do, and your friend speaks to them once and they become a Christian. We need to be talking to people. We need to be listening to people. We need to be praying. And the big thing we need to do is inviting. Um, APEC, I think, is brilliant at um, community events. Um, hot cross bun, uh, cafe, Christmas events, um, light parties. You name it, APEC are great at it. We can't do that at the moment. We're making a, a go at different things and we're doing our best, but actually we are good at it. And when the reality of world comes, the world comes back is we'll be able to do it again. But the question is, do we just put on the events or do we specifically invite people? Are we missional? As individuals, not the church, let's not hide behind the church. Are we as, as individual Christians, <coughs> do we invite our friends? Do we tell our neighbours about something happening around the corner? Um, because that may be what Jesus is asking you to do. That may be the only thing that Jesus is asking you to do. And the final B, be intentional. Don't put it off till tomorrow. Um, intentionality sounds very American. Um, and forgive me for that. Um, but I, a few years ago, I was at a New Wine Christian Conference, and I believe God challenged me to write a book on humble intentionality. And three years on, I haven't started. Well, that's a lie. I've written an index page. Um, but I've put it off. So I've put off what I feel God's told me to do. I'm not being intentional. I'm not getting on with it. And the question this morning is, what can we take from some of this? And I haven't said to you, how, go and talk to them about this and this and this. How can I take some of these, these little tips and give them a go? What can I do to try and make a difference from what I'm doing now to what I'm going to do tomorrow? Uh, and it might be, what about taking some names? Um, three names, five names, that you would love to see opportunities to share your faith or invite to church. Write them down on a post-it note, stick them in your Bible, put them on your phone um, if you use apps on your phone, and pray for them every day. If you're in a home group, why can't you do that as a home group? Who could you pray for that actually in this community would be amazing if we could see them come to faith? Um, who are those individuals you think, actually, you know, I've always thought about inviting them to the Hot Cross Cafe or something like that, start to pray for them, start to think about them. And there are so many different things we can do. Um, so we need to be intentional. And the challenge for us all in all of this is to keep motivated. And at the time, at this moment, it is difficult to keep motivated. Um, but actually, I encourage you. I, I really encourage you. Why not? Why put off what you can do now till tomorrow? We'll do it. I need to try and write that book at some point. It may not be God, but I think it might be. And if it is, he'll help me write it. But actually, I keep putting it off. We need to be intentional. And so I encourage you today to think about a few of those things um, and think, what can I do to improve my, my faith sharing? Um, we're all in this together. It says in 1 Corinthians 3, 6 to 8, and I'm nearly finished. Um, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God had been making it grow. We can do our bit. We do the bit that God is asking us to do, and God will do the rest. We all have a part to play, but we all do. If we all do our part, God will do the rest. He's not asking us to do 
Terry's job. He's not asking us to do Natalie's job. He's not asking you to do my job. He's asking us to do what he calls you to do. And we will see that actually we'll have opportunities to share Jesus more and more every, every week. And we will see more people show interest and start to show interest in the church. Um, in closing, I want to encourage you with your testimony. Um, I, I talked about, you know, having that story um, early on. You need to have a story to tell. Because if you don't, well, what's the point? What is, what, so if somebody says to you, so tell me about Jesus, what, why is, does he make a difference to you? What would you say? Um, and I encourage you to, to think that through. Um, I, I, again, right back at my career, back at 43 Trust, I can remember going to an event where um, somebody said, oh, this gentleman who'd been a, a Christian for 50 years, he's going to share his testimony with you. He's going to share his story with you. And our testimony really should be quite short and, and direct and succinct and mean something about the difference Jesus has made in your life. And I knew it was going to be bad when this guy went, well, I was born in 1930. And he then took 15 minutes to tell me about his whole life before he became a Christian. And you can see people have lost the plot. So I want to encourage you, think about your story. What difference does Jesus make in your life? And I want you to think about how succinct you can make it using no church words, no redemption, no justification, sanctification, all of that, because I struggle to know what some of them mean sometimes. And the people out there really don't. But actually, what would you say if somebody said, tell me your story? And I want to encourage you to try and do it as short as possible, maybe 30 seconds. And over the next few weeks, if anybody wants to let me know or let Paul know, and we will try and give each per somebody an opportunity, maybe two people in a service, to have 30 seconds to say, this is what Jesus means to me. And why would that make a difference to a non-Christian? And uh, Anybody that's willing to do it, I'll buy you an Easter egg. I'll buy you an Easter egg, I'll find you, and I'll deliver it. Socially distanced, but I think it'd be a good way for us just to be encouraged and to encourage each other. Many of you will remember Natalie did a video a while ago about her faith journey. And it really encouraged me, and I'm, I'm sure it encouraged some of you. So give it a go. Right, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to have our final song. Lord, um, this is a big subject. It's a, it's a big thing, sharing our faith, and most of us are terrified of doing so. But actually, you call us to live out our faith in how we behave, in how we act with other people, in front of other people. And it also call, you call us to answer questions. And Lord, we pray this morning that you encourage each one of us to think about what story would I tell if I was asked? Now, who can I pray for? Who can I invite? Who can I intentionally try to draw closer to you? And uh, Lord, I pray to encourage each one of us that we've all got gifts given from you. We've all got skills that you want us to use in order to grow your kingdom. Lord, if we're not sure, reveal them to us now. Um, and just pray you'll be with each one of us this week in every way possible. Amen.